Okay, we're going to continue our unit on writing linear equations, and today we're going to focus on writing equations when we're given two points. Uh, we learned how to write an equation when we're given the slope and the intercept. Uh, we also took a look at how to write an equation when we're given the slope and a point. Now we'll look at when we're just given two points. How can we find the slope and the intercept in that way? So we'll work through that today. All right, so let's take a look at the different forms of equations that we have and um, how we can use those different forms of equations to um, help us. The first form we have should be familiar, that's slope-intercept form. And in slope-intercept form, it's very helpful when we know the slope and when we know the intercept. It's called slope-intercept form because when we get the slope and the intercept, we can plug those two parts in. The other one we're going to take a look at is point slope form. This one can be helpful uh, when we know the slope, m, and when we just know a point. Uh, we can plug in the x and y coordinates for a point and use that to help us uh, get the right form of the equation that we want. So let's say we have an equation that passes through point 3, 2 and has a slope of 2. Well, if we start off in point slope form, y minus y1 is m, x minus x1. So let's fill in the blanks. What do we know? We know slope is 2. We'll substitute 2 in for m. And we're also going to substitute in our point, our x1, y1. And the ones just signify that we're dealing with one specific point. So we're putting 3 in for x, and we're going to put 2 in for y1. So if we write out our equation, it'll be y minus, instead of y1, we're going to use 2. And instead of m, we're using 2 because that's our slope. x minus 3. Okay, this would be our equation in point slope form uh, that goes through point 3, 2, and slope of 2. So uh, we're just getting used to using point slope form. We'll see how it can be beneficial for us in just a moment. All right. So if we want to write an equation, if we're given two points, uh, let's say the equation goes through 8, 5, and 11, 14. The question you should always ask yourself, like that funny-looking guy in the yellow sweater vest, uh, is what do I know and what do I need? Well, I know I have two points, and what do I need? Well, I need to find the slope and the y-intercept. Do I have the slope? Not directly given to me. Do I have the y-intercept? I don't have that either. So what I can do is I can figure out the slope. Well, how do I find slope? It's the difference of the y and the difference of the x. So if I take the difference of the y's, 14 minus 5, over the difference of the x's, since I started with 14, I have to start with 11, 11 minus 8. 14 minus 5 is 9, 11 minus 8 is 3, and I can simplify that down as 3. So my slope is 3, uh, but I still don't know my y-intercept. So we can use our point slope form that we started with last time. y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Plug in the information we know. I have two points, two coordinates, and it doesn't matter which one I use, uh, but I can just choose one of those. And I could say, well, y minus, let's just go with 8 pi since it's smaller. 8 minus, or y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 8. And if I want to get it into slope-intercept form, I'm going to have to get the y by itself. So I'll distribute first. y minus 5 equals 3x minus 24. And I can add 5 to both sides. y equals 3x minus 19. And that would be the equation in slope-intercept form. Uh, the other way you could do that 
is just take our general slope intercept form and just start plugging in what we know. Uh, y equals, our slope we said was 3x plus b. We said we didn't know that y intercept yet. Uh, so another thing we could do, if we don't want to use point slope form, just want to use slope intercept, we can plug in one of those points. For example, 8, 5 again, 5 in for y. 8 in for x. And this is more familiar with what we did last time. So if you're more comfortable going this way, that's fine. Solve for b. b is negative 19. So our y-intercept is negative 19, which we found out before. So we just plug in the parts that we know. y equals slope is 3, so 3x. y-intercept is negative 19 minus 19. Notice that whatever method I choose, I will end up with the same thing. Okay? So let's say we want to create a linear function uh, with the given values. f of negative 2 is 15. f of 1 is 9. Uh, so in this case, uh, let's take a look at what we have. And remember, in function form, we can convert those to ordered pairs. So f of negative 2 is 15 is negative 2, 15. f of 1 equals 9 is 1, 9. So I have two points. What do I need to find? I need to find slope, and I need to find y-intercept. Two things you should always look to find when you're writing a linear equation. I don't have slope given to me. i got to find it. Slope is difference of y and the difference of the x. So 15 minus 9 and negative 2 minus 1 gives me 6 over negative 3, which simplifies as negative 2. So my slope is negative 2. Just got to find my y-intercept now. I'm going to start off in slope-intercept form and switch it down. So uh, my, I'm going to choose 1, 9 as the point that I'll use for my x and y. It's because there's no negatives in there. Sometimes when I use all positives, it makes it a little bit easier. So 9 is my y value. My slope, we said, was negative, negative 2 times x, which is 1, plus b. Simplify and solve for b. And in so doing, find out b is 11. So my y-intercept is 11. Therefore, I can rewrite my equation. y equals negative 2x plus 11. You might find that organizing your information, find the two variables that we need to find, slope and y-intercept, and then reorganizing to write your equation might be beneficial. Okay, let's take a look at another example. Uh, here we go, just doing some practice writing in point-slope form. Uh, so why don't you just pause the video and try to write those equations your own. Restart it when you're ready. Okay, so since the first one, the slope is negative 3, I plug that in for m. Remember, point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. Just a matter of plugging in the different parts that we have. So since m is negative 3, our slope is negative 3, we plug that in. And our points are negative 3, 1. So x minus negative 3 is x plus 3, y minus 1. Same thing. Um, coordinate is negative 2, negative 4, so x minus a negative 2 is x plus 2. y minus a negative 4 is plus 4. Our slope is 1 half. Uh, the next one we had to find the slope down 2 over 4, which is, simplifies as negative half. We have two points, so if we're writing in point slope form, we choose either point. So if I use the top point, y minus 4 equals negative half times x plus 5. Or an equivalent equation would be y minus 2 equals negative half times the quantity x plus 1. Uh, these would simplify into the same uh, form in slope-intercept, uh, but these are equivalent, and it doesn't matter which format you choose if you're writing it out in point-slope. You can see the same thing for the next example there. All right, so let's get another form of equation. That would be standard form. So once again, we have slope-intercept our favorite. And then the other one we learned 
Okay, let's point slope. And then we get to standard form. Okay, standard form is just when we have the x and the y terms together on one side of the equation and our constant term on the other side. Uh, Ax plus by equals c, where the a and the b are just uh, coefficients of x and y. Uh, but just keep in mind with, with this format, x and y are on one side of the equation, constant term on the other. And it's just a matter of rearranging the parts of the equation. So uh, nothing changes. You've got to find slope. You've got to find intercept if you're going to write an equation. So let's start off by taking a look at the equation down here. We've got point one, one and 2, negative 2. So I've got to find slope. So I go down 1, 2, 3 over 1. So my slope equals negative 3. And I don't have the intercept. So we could start in point slope form. So y minus y1, which I'm going to choose that point. 1, 1, because it's easier to work with, smaller numbers. So y minus 1 equals m, which is negative 3, times x minus 1. Now, I just need to rewrite the equation into standard form, so I can distribute. And that gives me y minus 1 equals negative 3x plus 3. And now i got to get the x terms on one side, so I'll move the x terms to the left, so I'll add 3x to both sides. So I have positive 3x and a positive y minus 1 equals 3. And now i got to get the constant terms. Since I have the x term and the y term on the left side, I'll add 1 to both sides of the equation so that my x and y terms are alone and my constant terms are on the other side. So this would be back into standard form. If I wanted, I could get it in a slope intercept by just subtracting 3x from both sides. And I'd be left with y equals a negative 3x and a positive 4. And that would be slope intercept. So I could get that equation into three different formats. Just a matter of which format is useful for me at the time. Do I want it in point slope? Do I want to change it to standard? Or is it more beneficial in slope intercept? You found out that there are different advantages for each format when you're graphing. So it's just a matter of preference. All right, so let's do some practice uh, trying to write these equations in standard form. Uh, so either start off in point slope and change it, or start off in slope intercept. So pause the video, try it out on your own, and start it when you're ready. Okay, so you can check over my work that I did. Uh, the first example, I started off in point slope form to show you how it works. Found my slope. So two things you always got to find are slope and intercept. Uh, so I found, started off with my slope, found that to be 3 substituted in a point. I right, chose point 3, 1 and 3, negative 1. So I substituted the 3 and the negative 1 in along with my slope. Simplified the equation by distributing and then got the x terms alone with the y terms on the left side and then I got my constant terms over to the right side and there's the in standard form. Second equation given two points so I found my slope first this time I used uh, slope-intercept form. So I started with my slope of m of 4. And I chose insert 1 and 1 in for x and y. Solve to find b, which was negative 3. Since I had negative 3, I substituted that in for my slope-intercept form. And then in that case, I had to subtract the 4x from both sides to get the negative 4x plus y on the left side and negative 3 on the right. Okay, so it works either way, you just got to find out which you're more comfortable with. Let's take a look at a word problem. A dog kennel charges $20 per night to board your dog. You can also have a doggy treat delivered to your dog for $5. Write an equation that models the possible combinations of nights at the kennel and doggy treats that you can buy for $100. All 
uh, graph the situation. Explain what the intercepts of the graph mean in this situation. So we have two variables. Okay, we have nights at the kennel and doggy treats. So let's call x is nights at kennel. And our y variable will stand for number of doggy treats. I don't own a dog, so I don't need to worry about this, but maybe you do. Maybe you like dogs. I don't know. So what's our equation? We're talking about the number of nights at the kennel, which is $20 a night. So $20 for every night at the kennel. Plus, a doggy treat is $5. Seems like a ripoff. $5 for every doggy treat. And we are spending $100 on our dog. So that will give us all the combinations. So if we were to graph this scenario, let me pause it and pull up a graph for us to work with. I'll show you how we can find the different combinations. Okay, so now since this equation is in standard form, one way to graph that would be to find the intercepts. So if I put 0 in for x and solve for y, that would leave me with 5y equals 100. Divide by 5, y is 20. So that would be the coordinate 0, 20, which means I buy 0 nights at the kennel and get 20 doggy treats. Or I could substitute 0 in for y and solve for x. It would leave me 20x plus 5 times 0 is 0, so that equals 100. Divide by 20, x is 5. It's the coordinate 5, 0. So I could buy 5 nights and no treats for my dog. And the graph would look like this. Okay? So how do we find different combinations? Well, we need to find on the graph, you know, what are the different points on the graph that would allow me to spend $100. Uh, another way we can do this might be a little easier to find those combinations is look on our graphing calculator. Okay, so if we graph that equation as we talked about how to graph that, uh, we can just look on our graphing calculator and find out some different combinations. So we can just drag our point along until we see which combinations we have. And it looks like 212 is a combination. So we had our intercept at 0, 20. We have 212. And we have 5, 0. Are there any other combinations that we can use? I can drag along and see if there's any other whole number combinations. 4, 4 is another one. Drag that here. So, four different combinations. I can give my dog zero nights and 20 treats, two nights at the kennel and 12 treats, four nights and four treats, or I'm just going to stay five nights and get zero treats. Poor dog. So that's how we can use a graph in standard form. Uh, sometimes it's beneficial written in that form because we can find the intercepts, uh, create a graph, and find the solutions that we need.